Okay, this place is awesome. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at Jonathan Dickinson State Park here in South Florida. This is the largest state park in the state at just over 10,500 acres. And you can tell, I pulled into this park and this place is huge. There is so much stuff to do here and I'm so excited to take y'all along. This is gonna be a really fun episode. First thing on our agenda today is, well, I'm gonna eat my lunch first. I got a pub sub here, it's about 12 o'clock. And at one o'clock, we're gonna be going on a boat tour down the Loxahatchee River to a old homesteading site of a gentleman named Trapper Nelson. We'll talk about him later. It's going to be really, really cool. This homestead can only be reached by boat. So we're going to go check that out. I just bought tickets. They were $30 and the tour is about an hour and a half. So that's gonna be really cool. There's also tons of biking trails and mountain biking trails in this park. I really wanted to try mountain biking cause I've never done that before, but I went to the concession place where you rent the mountain bikes and they actually don't have any that work right now. She said they're all broken. There's also some really cool trails in this park. I just learned that the Ocean to Lake Florida Trail crosses right through this state park, which is really cool. The start is at Hobe Sound and that trail ends at Lake Okeechobee. It takes about five days to do. I think it's like 60 something miles. One day I'm gonna get out there and do that. So I also heard that there's a mountain to climb in this state park. So we're gonna check that out too. And of course, we're gonna be camping tonight and I have a really fun meal planned for us to be um, trying something new. So join with me on this awesome journey here at Jonathan Dickinson State Park and uh, we'll see what we get into. For now, time to fuel up and eat some lunch first before we go adventuring. So Trapper Nelson was a hunter and he actually started a zoo at this homestead site that we're gonna go visit. It was a popular tourist spot in the 1940s to the 1960s until it was actually shut down by the state health inspectors. After the zoo shut down about eight years later, they found Trapper Nelson dead at his homestead. They're unsure of how or why he passed, but he did have a gunshot wound. Around that time is also when the land was traded and given to Jonathan Dickinson State Park. A lot of his original homestead still stands today, but apparently there's still a lot to see. So I'm excited to do the boat ride and learn a little bit more about the legend of um, Trapper Nelson. All right, y'all, welcome to Trapper Nelson's homestead. Getting off the boat felt like I was immediately stepping back into time. This spot was so cool. Right away, you can see where he used to trap and display animals for the public. He would catch all kinds of animals native to Florida, including a panther and, of course, alligators. This was his deer plant stand and sell them to whoever was coming to visit. that jungle feeling. This is actually an African sausage tree. It's only, I think, maybe a half dozen It's uh, in the United States, or in North America, I believe. It's pollinated by bats. This is the guest house. Trapper Nelson used to let tourists stay the night on the property where there was no electricity, but there was indoor plumbing and running water from a well that he dug. Some very well-known people stayed here, including the Kennedys. A couple mango trees here, uh, and he grew everything from citrus to pineapples. He liked to keep his gopher tortoises there because he was a big fan of gopher tortoise soup. He lived out here approximately 30 to 40 years. Oh. So this was his home as well as his storage facility. I 
it or not, the Cheeky Hut here is actually where he was found um, dead in 1968. There's a lot of kind of local lore, mystery, and debate as far as what happened officially with him. There was a property development company. They wanted to build a golf course and they had their eyes set on this piece of property, not the most ideal. Um, so what ended up happening was they had, they did a land swap deal with the state of Florida. And then this was then integrated into the state park system for future generations to enjoy. Well, Wow, that was so cool. I really loved that little tour of the Trapper Nelson home site. I am headed to our next adventure in the park. We are gonna go climb a mountain. All right, welcome to Hobe Mountain Tower. So this mountain is actually an 86 foot ancient sand dune that is the highest point in South Florida. And what they've done is they've built a 27 foot viewing platform observation tower thing that you can hike up to and get a view of the intercoastal, the Atlantic Ocean, all of Jonathan Dickinson State Park. Pretty cool little structure here. So let's hike on up. There, you can see the intercoastal, the Atlantic Ocean, and this is all Jonathan Dickinson State Park. Oh, this site is so cool. Here's my spot. And this spot is awesome because it's private. I have a bunch of palmettos on either side and it's really quiet. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. All right, let's get camp set up. Only bad thing about this site is I can already tell it is probably Fire Ant Nation. They are everywhere. This camping adventure is much different than last week's because it is 86 to 85 degrees. Oh, I got the 40s last week. It's cold. All right. Got a pretty good pitch there. Tonight, we're gonna to be cooking with something I've never cooked with before. We got ourselves a cast iron Dutch oven. And on the menu tonight, I have gopher tortoise soup. So I learned from research and the tour of Trapper Nelson that that was one of his favorite foods, gopher tortoise soup. Of course, we will definitely not be eating gopher tortoises in our soup today for two reasons. One, gophers are on the endangered species, they're protected species here in Florida. And two, I have no interest in ever consuming a turtle. But I thought it would be cool to try to do a remake of that recipe. Instead of the gopher tortoise for the meat, we're gonna be using pork. I wanted to use alligator, but alligator meat is a lot harder to find in Florida than you would think. <laughs> so I guess I'm gonna get this recipe started here. Let's see how this goes. First thing we gotta do though, first things first, is build a fire. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm building this fire. It is hot. 
first thing we got to do is cook the pork. So they want us to stew it in, where's my recipe? Cut meat into two inch pieces and simmer in salted water until tender. Some salted water in here. This is salt pork. So we're gonna crisp up the salt pork until it's crispy and all the fat has rendered. And this is basically like bacon, but the fattier version of bacon. I did not know that salt pork existed until I found this recipe, so. That looks disgusting. We're just following the recipe, so if y'all don't like what I'm doing, don't come for me. This was what Chopper Nelson did, so. The one thing I didn't bring this time was a shovel to shovel the coals out. So I'm gonna have to deal with what I got. Oh yeah, listen to that. It's already smelling good. All right, there we go. We got our pork saw all crisped up. So now we're gonna add this meat to our cast iron. Alright, we're gonna get those browned up. Right. We're also gonna need some chopped onion and bell pepper. So let me get that cut up. We're gonna add our onion, bell pepper, crushed tomatoes, and minced garlic. Let's go ahead and do that. Crushed tomatoes. I don't know that I'm going to use all this. Minced garlic. I like garlic, so there we go. So we're going to simmer that for 20 minutes now. going to cut some potatoes that we're about to add into the soup. Forgot my kitchen knife again, but this is probably what Trapper Nelson used anyway, so potatoes are ready. And we're gonna do some datil pepper sauce. I don't know if I'm saying that right. These peppers are grown in St. Augustine, Florida. They're about as hot as a habanero pepper. So I'm going to try it in the soup. It says to add some. So yeah. Anybody had this before? I couldn't find the actual peppers. I just was able to find the sauce at Publix. So better than nothing. We have some bay leaves we need to add. Salt, pepper. So we're going to go ahead and add the potatoes. Oh, I forgot. We add the water that we cooked the meat in earlier. And just a dash of this pepper sauce because I don't know what we're getting into here. Okay. okay, I got a little dab of the pepper sauce. Let's see. Oh, that's good. That's not even spicy. I'm gonna close this up. Next, we're gonna make corn pone, which is kind of like corn pancakes that we can eat the soup with. For that, we're gonna get a cup of hot water, some cornmeal. And we're going to also add some salt. Oh, frick, that's pepper. Oh, well. We're going to have a little pepper flavor too. I'm not sure. The water is hot. And then we're going to let that sit for 10 minutes with this over it. All right, our corn stuff has been sitting for the amount of time that it was supposed to be. I'm going to make little patties and fry those up on the cast iron. So I'm going to put the cast iron on the fire and make this hot. 
And we're gonna form these into four little cow patties. They're not perfect, but. So let's go put those on our cast iron. It's time. It definitely has not been simmering for an hour or whatever, but it's hot. The potatoes are done. Look at that. Ooh wee. There's how the corn patties turn out. I'm gonna grab one, put it in my soup, and there we have it. Gopher tortoise stew with corn pone made by yours truly at Jonathan Dickinson State Park. Oh, that was a lot of work. I'm ready to eat. Let's taste and see what we have here. So I'll go in first with a piece of the pork. Wow, that pork is perfectly cooked. I was a little worried about it because I just didn't know about boiling at first, but yeah, that was great. Mm. Got a little bit of that salt pork. I'm gonna get more of that pepper sauce. And I'll try it with my little corn thingy that I got. Dip it in there. Mmm. Let's go for a little roll around the campsite. Y'all, there's coons up in that palm tree. They're both up there feasting away on berries or something. Oh my gosh, you're the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at the sky. It's so dark pink. You can't tell in the video. It's really pretty. One thing I really am liking about this campground is it's really quiet. You can't hear any road noise whatsoever. And you just hear nature, really. All right, y'all, here's my tent situation. I got my toiletries. Got the jackery here, powering my fan that is attached to the trekking pole. And I got my Z-Pax 30 degree bag, which is gonna be way too hot for tonight, but it's what I have. I got my Walmart air mattress. It's a setup for the tent tonight. It's only like eight o'clock, but I think I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos and then head to sleep because we have some more adventures to hit tomorrow before we go home. So I'm gonna try to get some sleep and I'll see you guys in the morning. of mornings friends mm. oh. oh it's a beautiful morning I slept really really good it got pretty chilly last night I had to turn off my fan and put on my hoodie and uh, the only thing that woke me up were the raccoons. I figured they would come visit me because that's just how raccoons are. So I had scared them away from my tent a couple times and they were scurrying up the trees and wrestling in the palmettos all night. I keep getting so lucky with my camp spots 
is what I'll do is I'll kind of start looking around during the week to see where I want to go. A lot of the campsites will be booked already and there'll only be like four or five left. And then I do research on those sites. End up picking the best campsite in the whole park. Like 137 in this park is the most private. I didn't have anybody like really around me. I'm gonna pack up camp though because I have another really cool place to take us. So let's do that real quick. All right, I wanna try this breakfast place that is by our next destination. So let's go get some food. We are at Blowing Rocks Preserve. So this is supposed to be a really cool area where there's rocks on the beach. But I read online and I'm reading right here that many of the rocks are actually buried in the sand right now. Sand has been building up on the beach. Over time, the waters will take the sand back out, but it's not really anything that they can help right now. Uh, so we'll see if we can see any of the rocks and what it looks like. This is all a protected seashore, which is why you don't see any houses or anything. It's all very natural. Apparently there's a lot of sea turtles that come and nest over here too. taller than me. I'm 5'7", so I think it's low tide right now, but at high tide, the water comes up and it hits these rocks and it just goes up. I think there's some up here that we could still see. Thank y'all so much for coming with me on this weekend's adventure. I definitely did not get enough time at Jonathan Dickinson State Park. There's just so much to do. So if you go, plan on making it a whole weekend because one day just isn't enough. Make sure you stop by the Blowing Rock Preserve. This place is just so beautiful. I can't wait to come back. 
as always thank you so much for watching if you like this content and you want to see more make sure to hit that subscribe button like this video and leave a comment and letting me know what you want to see me do next until next time i'll see y'all then bye